And our next speaker, speaker is Dr. Quentin Brosseau uh, at UPenn. Um, and he will talk uh, to us you know, about uh, aerial taxis of micro swimmers. So, um, Quentin. Thank you, Kela, for the, for the introduction. I believe you can hear me. Uh, so uh, my name is Quentin Brosso. I'm a postdoc uh, in the group of Paolo Aracia at the uh, um, University of Pennsylvania. And my, two, my today's talk is about controlling the upstream migration of micro swimmers. And by this, I mean, uh, by micro swimmers, I mean uh, both microorganisms and also uh, self-propelled um, active colloids. And more precisely, the uh, phenomenology I'm referring to is the following is if I uh, oh, the video is starting so if I so those are videos of, of E. coli in a in a microfluidic channel uh, in an absence of of any flow you can see that E. coli are just driving uh, swimming into a, a random uh, random um, uh, orientation random direction and they're just simply diffusing around now right? they're just they are going essentially going nowhere. So we, we speak about hand hands the diffusivity. They have their speed, which is bringing them places, but um, their rotational diffusivity is is uh, randomizing and uh, their their orientation. Now, if we impose an unidirectional flow, which is coming from the left here, we see that uh, suddenly the bacteria starts to be a bit more uh, oriented. And if you follow this kind of bacteria, this little one here, for instance, you see that it has a propensity to to move upstream. In that case, and if we look at the average uh, velocity of, of uh, these bacteria, what we see is that there is a mean flux of bacteria which are going upstream. We then speak about upstream rheotaxis, so we're moving against the flow. Uh, and this, this uh, type of, of, of phenomenon has a practicality for, for uh, target delivery uh, in, in, in therapeutics, where we can think about um, those kind of, of motors bringing uh, drugs to a, a places that could be uh, um, uh, determined by the flow. Um, so what are the mechanism behind that? So oh, I'm facing the same problem. There you go. Um, so there is a difference between orientation strategy in flow and microscopic living and also in, in, for microorganism. So for microscopic living, like uh, uh, fish, in that case, salmon, which is trying to um, go upstream to lay eggs. Well, someone have a uh, tons of sensor which uh, detect the pressure of the current and they have a, an active, uh, they are able to, to develop an active response to the current. So they know uh, where they are situated and they respond actively to that. In the case of microorganism and especially non-living micro, uh, um, uh, uh, colloids, which also exhibit real taxes, there is no sensor whatsoever. So what we they rely on is a passive re, uh, reaction to velocity gradients. And there are main, uh, a few main, uh, main uh, uh, contribution to that. So a gradient will, um, um, a gradient will um, affect anisotropic so, um, bodies, so elongated bodies in such a way that um, they will start to develop um, um, tumbling motions or kayaking motion, which are generally known as Jeffrey orbits, which are determined by the, the shape anisotropy and the velocity gradient. So these are in bulk, uh, bulk motions. And uh, close to the wall, there is a, a another uh, effect, which is called the weather vane effect, which comes to the fact that close to a surface, um, uh, microorganism or micro swimmers tends to swim towards a wall and stay close to a wall and there is a pinning effect where their head gets pinned on the, on the wall, gets anchored on the wall, and the, the, the background shear is a reorients them uh, against the, 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 the flow. So keep this, in, this weather vane effect in mind because I will be uh, speaking a lot about it in the, in the rest of the talk. And um, yeah, that's what I said. Uh, elongated body tend to um, experience larger torque in, in um, flow grade, a velocity gradient, flow velocity gradients or shear, which reorient them against, uh, uh, which align them on, on the shear. So shape anisotropy will affect, and also many more. So these are, and the, by many more, I mean uh, effects which are uh, usually due to the to the to the biology of the microorganism. Uh, 
Um, so real taxis exist uh, in, in model system and uh, occurs in nature and we have good good uh, example for that. So there are this, this uh, shear trapping uh, phenomenon which occurs in uni again unique directional flow and was evidence that after a certain time leaving E. coli will tend to deplete the center line of a, a unique directional flow, deplete the, the region of low shear to accumulate in the region of high shear. And this is due to the fact that a, a bacteria which lives in a high shear region will orient on the shear, move up and down the shear, but will have a hard time uh, get away from this due to the, due to the, the torque which align it on the shear. So this, these are um, bulk uh, phenomenon. When we are close to the surface, well, again, here is an example of E. coli. And E. coli has a flagellum which turns into an, a certain direction, so there is a chirality to it. And this chirality breaks the symmetry close to the wall. So what we see is that in a uh, rectangular ch channel, bacteria um, which are swimming close to the upper wall will be, will be deflected towards the left, and uh, bacteria uh, uh, swimming at the bottom wall uh, will be deflected toward the right. And they would tend to accumulate into the corner of the, the rectangular channels and, and tend to go upstream in this, in this region. So we have an effective symmetry breaking again, which uh, uh, pushes the bacteria towards the corner, the vertical wall, and, and development of edge currents, which is uh, um, upstream reotaxis in, the, in that case. Um, so those are, those are have been evidenced in, uh, in living organisms. Um, in parallel, in synthetic system, we have, um, there was the developments of uh, self-propelled colloids. So what we have here is a PMMA bead with an hematite, which is embedded on it, that performs self-diffusive uh, polarizes. And when um, um, submitted to a moderate flow coming from this direction here, we see that the trajectory tends to go uh, against, um, against the flow. So this is the starting point and the, this little colloid starts to, to move upstream. When the shear is larger, when the flow, flow profile is larger, then what the, the effect is, is that the, the, the colloids are dragged downstream. So there is a, 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 a competition between the propulsion and here and the, and the background flow, which, which starts to emerge. And typically the, the type of curve that we have, we, uh, from this, this uh, model, which is also true for uh, uh, nanorods, bimetallic nanorods, is that for low shear, we are going against the flow, like negative uh, uh, x direction. And then as the flow progresses, we are more and more dragged downstream. So I'll, I'll go in detail in this, in this, uh, in this phenomenon. Um, so the take home message here, I spoke about tuning the real, the real taxis. So we know that here now that real taxis is affected by the velocity gradient or the shear, which is uh, experienced by the bacteria or the micro swimmer, uh, the shape and isotropy. So we need, we need a certain uh, elongation and the motility. And this is the point that I will detail in the talk. And I give you the summary now. What we'll show in the, part, the first part is that self-propelled nanorod uh, can be improved by changing the mode of actuation. So. I'll detail that. And in part two, I'll see that I'll show that the react axis of E. coli is affected by uh, shear thinning effect in, in, uh, in complex food. So now you can go back to your normal activities or if you want details, you just stay tuned, uh, tuned with me. Um, so a quick view at the experiment. So we are doing, uh, what am I doing? I'm doing is experiments. Uh, I'm tracking uh, the 2D motion of uh, the micro swimmer close to uh, the lower boundary of a microfluidic channel away from the wall because uh, I want to avoid this, this, uh, this edge current that I've, I've shown before. So we're really looking at the center of the, of the channel. And what, is, what matters in that case is the vertical shear or the vertical velocity gradient, which is developed in the, in the Z direction in, the, in that case. Um, the uh, bottom wall is, we've seen that it's where E. coli experience upstream rate axis, but also when it comes to um, dense, um, colloids, this is also where the sediment, so there is nowhere else to look at. So this is for, to give you the, the background of this experiment. So we can control the flow rate and we'll be uh, changing the flow rate and see how they will act in different uh, type of um, uh, conditions. Uh, so start, first, red axis versus act actuation. So when it comes to uh, looking at the microorganism actuation, there is a broad dichotomy which exists between uh, what we call pushers 
which are rare actuated uh, microorganisms, most, most of the time with, with flagellum at the back, um, so the type of, of E. coli, which develop a flow profile around them, which looks like an ex extensile dipole. So they push the fluid around uh, in front of them, they push the fluid behind them, and the, the flow recirculation gets uh, the fluid to move towards the body on the side. So that's the type of what we call ex uh, extensile for that force dipole. Uh, the other side, uh, there is the type of um, puller which correspond to a Chlamydomonas, Chlamydomonas renati, which perform breaststroke. So this, this microorganism is pulling the fluid in front of it, pulling the front, front fluid at the back by dragging this huge body uh, uh, through the fluids. And we have the reverse. We have a contractile for dipole. So the flow is moving towards the bacteria, the microorganism from the front and back and, and is expelled on the, on the side. So we're pushing away from the, the breaststroke. So now the, the question is, if we manage to um, um, build this kind of uh, pusher and puller, what are, the, what are, what, what are their uh, real tactic performance? Is it the same? Is pusher better than puller? So that's what we are studying uh, next. Um, first of all, I'll give you a, a little a quick uh, overview of how we build synthetic pushers and puller. So experimentally, so this is a work which has been developed at uh, NYU Chemistry in the group of uh, Michael Ward. We can uh, uh, build these uh, nano roads with, which uh, are propelled by uh, self electrophoresis in a, in a solution of H2O2. So they're composed of two uh, parts, a, a gold section and a platinum section. And what we are able to do is to modify the uh, relative ratio of the platinum uh, section and the rod section to make it symmetric or to have a longer um, uh, platinum section or, or shorter platinum section. And in, in so we, what we're expecting with that is that uh, the actuation, um, the slip region is, is, is uh, uh, centered on the, on the junction of both um, uh, metallic uh, sections. So what we expect is that this little guy here will look more like pusher and this legal gal will, will more, look more like a puller. And this is um, in, in, in addition to the physical uh, experimental uh, pusher puller, what we develop is numerical model where we uh, simulate these rods by uh, 3D rigid rods, which are made of, of regularized stock, regularized stock slats. We um, compute the flow around them. And this little guy are uh, a slip region, which is displayed in red here that can be moved uh, continuously from the front to the back. So we could be in the centered in the center of the road, uh, center at the back or center at the front. And what we see already from the numerical model is that in that case, in case of a pusher, we obtain this uh, extensile dipole that I shown before. And in uh, the case of a puller, we already have, we have a uh, contact trial dipole. In the case of the symmetric, there is no um, first order, um, second order, um, uh, uh, solution, so we have to move to quadrupoles, and this is what, how the flow uh, looks like. So it's a bit, a bit more uh, uh, subtle. Uh, these rods are two micrometer; they are the size of a microorganism. So well, let's see what happens when you put them in, into flow. And this is what happens if there is no flow. That's the same uh, phenomenology I've shown before. It's a bit lagging; my computer is slow. Um, so this is their their trajectory in, a, in no flow and in a, in the presence of a background flow, what we see is that they are, they are moving again upstream. And this is the, pro the probability density function of their velocity. So the distribution of velocity that we, we record from the tracking of the, of the uh, nano rods. And what we see is that for no flow, we have something which is uh, center in zero. The mean velocity is, is a, along the x direction is zero. While when in presence of a background flow, we see that we have a peak which clearly emerged, uh, indicating that the velocity are going against the flow, so minus minus uh, value. So we have a net flux, a net upstream motion. Uh, there is a the third case here, which is not shown in, in video, is the non motile um, case where the bacteria, the the nano rod are just simply dragged down, and we have a very peak, uh, a very sharp peak, showing that they are just drifting away. Uh, the good news is uh, 
my slide is stuck. Oh, there you go. So the good news is uh, that we can perform also uh, with the uh, uh, numerical nanorod, we can perform the same type of experiments uh, in silico. And what we see is that the distribution is very, uh, very, very, very similar. So we have a symmetric distribution here in green for no, no flow. And as soon as the, the flow, the numerical flow is turned on, we have a, a, a peak which emerges at, uh, at, um, in the upstream direction. So there is a good agreement, which is quant quali quantitative, qualitative, but it's also quantitative. We see the, the peaks uh, are, are um, uh, very close to one another, and, and both in magnitude and also in, in position. So this is for the symmetric case. So now what happened when we, we start playing a bit with the flow rate? We can get a, uh, a full response map of the nanorod against the flow. Uh, let me see. My, uh, there you go. I think I've. I've... Oh, okay. Um, I'm going to jump over that. And the, the mapping of the, of the velocity. Uh, so, th what we have here in uh, y axis is the mean velocity along the x axis um, compared to the, the shear, uh, which is imposed. And what we see here in red, we have experiments. Uh, numerical uh, simulation are, are displayed here in, uh, in open symbols. And what we, we end up is the same typical curves that show that at moderate shear, we are able to perform rotaxis. We are able to, to move upstream. Um, and uh, we are being dragged around uh, down the flow uh, uh, at, at higher shear. And this is true for all the cases, for spooler, symmetric, and pusher. So we are, all of them are able to, to perf perform into, the, into a range of, of shear to perform some kind of upstream motion. Uh, however, what we see is that when we are moving from pooler to symmetric to pusher, we have overall a decreasing rotactic ability. And by this, I mean that the peak of the response in, in, uh, in velocity upstream is decreasing when, uh, as we are uh, moving the uh, the seep regions towards uh, towards the back of the of the of the uh, nano roads. Uh, I let you appreciate that the, the experiments at the Merkel model overall in 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 this um, range of shear that we have tested are agree pretty well. Um, so what we find is overall that um, Pooler are better pusher, pusher, uh, are really better real tactic at real taxis than, than pooler. Uh, why is that? <laughs> uh, there is a, a good reason for that. And in fact, if we go a bit deeper into the, the, the model, which are uh, the numerical model, which have been tested, what we can see uh, is that when we are close to a surface, uh, we develop some kind of pressure uh, um, uh, gradients um, between the, the rod and the surface, which which uh, imposes a tilt to the um, to the um, uh, to the nano rod. And what we see is that as we move the tilt, the the, the high pressure region, which corresponds to the back of the slip region, as we move it to the front of the of the of the, the rod, so from back to middle to 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 front, we see that the tilt angle alpha here, which is, which is shown uh, in this diagram here, uh, tends, to, tends to increase. And if we look a bit at the model that we have uh, been developing for the, uh, the equation of motion against the, the flow, we see that uh, the reorientation against the flow is not only dependent on the shear, we've seen that, but it's also depending on the tilt angle and, and uh, uh, proportional to the, to the tilt angle. So as the tilt angle increases, in fact, what we are able to do is to promote the reorientation of the, 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 the nanorods against the flow and, and prescribe a direction uh, against the flow so, so that um, it, um, the nanorod is, is better suited, better able to move, to move upstream. Um, so we have a, uh, so the rotactic efficiency depends 
on the tilt angle, which in turn depends on the signature, uh, the flow signature uh, given by the position of the of the steep region. So that's the the full story for the for the nano lens. Um, now uh, I'm going to move towards um, uh, real taxis in complex fluids. So this is a bit work in under pro in in progress, but basically what we are doing is. Uh, um, studying the, the motion of E. coli in complex fluid. And we're, um, uh, we're looking at uh, the motility in um, non-Newtonian viscous fluid and uh, Newtonian viscous fluid. And what we see is that in Newtonian viscous fluid, uh, what the literature, tell, literature tells us is that the motility is very sensitive to the presence of polymer and uh, through a modification of the run and tumble dynamics. So E. coli does this weird dance where it goes into a straight line uh, when the, its uh, flagella are bundled together. And when the flagella debundles, they, they start to uh, change the orientation, which is called the tumble, uh, tumbling, and take another direction. So this is the, the, the mechanism. And what we see is that uh, in a Newton and fluid, the presence of polymer usually, usually decreases the speed of the, of the E. coli. While in uh, non-Newtonian fl non fluid, and especially shear sinning fluid, we see that the, the presence of polymer tend to reduce the tumbling time and increase the running time, which in fact gives directionality to the, to the, to the, to the uh, bacteria, and in fact increases its uh, mean speed. So if we follow the, the mean speed of a, a E. coli into a, uh, as a function of the concentration of, of polymer, we see that we have a net, a net uh, increase. So how this contribution to velocity feeds back into the real taxisability, that's what, we, that's what I want to, to, to study, uh, to show here. Um, uh, we have- Quentin, you have three minutes. That's my three minutes, Mark, so I'll go, I'll go faster. So we're able, we're using two uh, different fluids, uh, three different fluids. FACOL is a, is a Newtonian viscous fluid. CMC and Zancam gun are um, two non Newtonoid fluids, which are uh, characterized here. We have a carrier Suda model, they are shear thinning uh, at a certain uh, shear rate. And this is the velocity uh, without background flow that I can record from the, from the E. coli. We see that for FICOL, we have a net decrease. And for uh, the non Newtonoid fluid, we have an increase in velocity, which, which decrease past a certain concentration. At a certain point, the, the presence of polymer makes the fluid too viscous even for the, the, the E. coli to, to swim comfortably. So first of all, what I want to show is how E. coli uh, reattacked in viscous Newtonian fluid. So here we have uh, the signal which is derived for a uh, different shear uh, for H2O in a dark spot here. And for the blue square is for FICO 1% and, uh, and um, Red square it's for FICOL 10 percent. Uh, look, so what we see immediately is that there is a very very narrow region where the the E. coli is able to to perform reotaxis and is immediately uh, washed away uh, as the shear is in, is increased. And this is true even for a moderate increase in in uh, viscosity. In turn, if I compare this to the signal which are which is retrieved from um, non-Newtonian fluid, what we see is that the shear uh, region where the, the, the range of shear for, for, where, for which the bacteria E. coli is able to perform upstream motion is, is extended significantly. So this is the uh, H2O signal and this is in presence of polymer, both for uh, low elasticity fluid and high elasticity uh, polymer, which is CMC, as I'm going as a uh, lower elasticity. So we have it. We, we know that shear sinning fluid are, are actively promoting uh, real taxes. And this is even more striking if I subtract, here is the difference of the velocity, um, the mean velocity upstream between the non-Newtonian fluid and the Newtonian fluid. And we see that we are uh, better by several, several uh, time, uh, the, we're able to, to resist the, 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 the flow by, by several time uh, in in non Newtonian fluids, and it's even true at very large shear. And I want this is a distribution of the angle. You remember that we are 
modifying our angle. And we see that for large shear, for uh, equivalent shear in H2O here in, in blue and in, um, present, in with presence of polymer in, in red, we see that we have a signal which is much more peak in zero, which means that most of the uh, E. coli are oriented up, upstream. And we have, um, uh, this, is, this is even true at high shear where we are not, the flux is not even going against the flow, but we are uh, overall being dragged, uh, dragged down the, uh, the flow. So real, the E. coli is, is retexis is dramatically improved by the, by the shear thinning, thinning effect uh, in your Newton effect. Uh, so what we see here uh, for last plot is a, is a rescaling, which is equivalent to the one which has been done with, for the nano rods. So we're rescaling by the um, um, uh, size of the body and also the, the, the velocity. And we, man we managed to get a, a good um, rescaling of our data, both in, uh, in for the Zantam girl and, uh, and the CMC, which tells us that in fact, the root axis in this case is largely dominated by viscous effect. The vis the, if elastic effects are present, they are, they are second order and they might be um, this crude analysis as, as, as it is for now is not revealing the, any elastic, an elastic contribution. Uh, finally, we, there is, um, we know that for large shears, which means no noise, the, the mean uh, X velocity is, is given by this by the position by the um, uh, ability to to move through the fluid and the position in the shear uh, so this little uh, fit here is verified is, is, uh, is a black line here it's verified for all uh, viscosity which which is uh, an improvement for uh, compared to the narrow rods where we only had uh, one type of viscosity where this this uh, this um, model was uh, was uh, satisfactory so with this, I'm going to conclude. So we have presented two, window, two means of optimizing the upstream rect access of a micro swimmer. First, by controlling the iteration of, of, uh, of the micro swimmer or its flow signature. Um, and the second one by uh, adding polymer and, and uh, introducing um, non-Newtonian effect into the, into the, 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 the fluid. Uh, with this, I would like to uh, acknowledge and thank uh, the New York University and the Flatiron Institute uh, team uh, that uh, uh, did the work on the nano road taxis. And I want to uh, thank uh, Brian uh, Torres Madonado, who is a, a grad student at Penn Engineering and who did the experiments about, uh, with uh, E. coli. And of course, all the, the support from the Aracia lab. I want to also thank the organizer for uh, the kind invitation and. Uh, Give me the opportunity to present this work in, uh, in front of the, the BPC, BPPB crowd. And thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you, Quentin. Um, we have a few questions from uh, the audience. Uh, the first is from uh, Ersag Pins. Mm -hmm. uh, it's about the nano rods. Uh, yes. Were the rods tracked in 2D or 3D? Uh, Everything is in 2D. We are only tracking in two dimension. And it's par particularly true for nano road, which are uh, 20 times denser than the, 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 um, the fluid. So they, they sediment very fast on, on the bottom, uh, the bottom uh, um, ground so, of the uh, uh, micro right. channel. So, um, he asks, uh, did you check the resistance time near the channel walls? Can you repeat that? Uh, did you check the resistance time near the channel walls? Uh, I'm not sure what the resistance time. So, uh, uh, the time it spends uh, at the wall. So they were always at the bottom of the wall. And... They're always at the bottom of the wall. Of course, if the shear is, is larger, there is a, there is a propension for, the, for a... Uh... So what the, what the model here doesn't capture, and, and I know has been uh, detailed in the... In the, in the this is the slide that I, I, uh, I jumped above. Um, so we see that the, 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 the nano rod, and it's also true for, for E. coli, they assume at the tilt angle alpha. Of course, if the shear um, is too large, they tend to, if, if they lose contact with the wall, they, 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 will, uh, they will start to, to fly away. They will start tumbling and, 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 and be dragged, uh, dragged away. I've not quantified the resonance time of the, of the rods uh, on the on the surface, what we are dealing here is uh, so far is um, 
is a mean behavior rather than, than cigar behavior. But this, this, effect is, uh, this effect happens both for nanorod and E. coli as well. Um, I think also what Ersag is asking is whether your channels were wide enough so the, the rods... The channels are... Um, it's six times larger than higher. So in fact, the shear is very large. And, and we are always, the area, the region of interest here is a bit exaggerated, but we are really looking at the movement in the center of the channel. We are, we are staying away from any, any influence from vertical wall, walls or, or edge currents. And in fact, this is the type of videos, this, those are the E. coli videos. And you can see that the walls are, are, are very far away from, from there. So the second question is from uh, John Betchhofer. Uh, he can ask as well. Uh, what is the mechanism producing sleep in the nanorods? Uh, why is there sleep only a long part of the rod? Hello. The sleep, the, the experimentally, what has been proven is uh, in the mechanism of self electrophoresis, what happened is a uh, there is uh, oxidation of, of H2O2 on one side and reduction of H2O2 on the other side. And this gives rise to a gradient in, in proton H+. And these gradients uh, create an electric field. So the, the, the proton are uh, advected at the back of the, of the rod um, uh, into the bilayer. And this creates this effectively the slip on the, on the, on the narrow no rod. Now, what, when I'm speaking about uh, partial slip on the, on the nanorod, this was, uh, in fact, um, a pure conjecture at the beginning. So this is the mode, numerical model as we, we uh, conjectured it uh, in, 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 uh, in, um, um, at, at the beginning of the experiments. Now, what we see is that the, the quantitative agreement between the uh, experiments um, and the numerical model, the numerical experiments are is is quite good and and for a large range of of uh, of uh, shear. So it kind of validates this uh, this assumption that um, the nanorods is is in fact uh, experiencing even in 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 real system is experiencing a a partial slip or something which can be modelized by a partial slip. So if, if I could uh, jump in. Uh, yeah. it, so we made this, so I was part of the modeling team for that. Uh, we made that assumption uh, in order to avoid having to deal with the whole electrochemistry. Um, yeah. So I just wanted to reduce it to a purely hydrodynamic model, which was still difficult because of the wall. And um, it seems that there is qualitative agreement, but- it There is quantitative fun. agreement. I mean, this is not too bad. <laughs> But if I can follow up, would there be, um, could you distinguish between, if I, if I understand this is full slip along part of the rod, but yes. you can imagine sort of a partial slip along full, the full rod too, would that be the same or? Um, like no, some... we are always considering full slip. slip is, is we, not... never, we never, con con uh, we never, we never uh, considered partial slip in the slip region. Okay. So we don't know the length of the sleep uh, region. We're assuming half just for modeling. So I was saying that you, you, would, you would take it to be the whole, the whole rod, but then it's only partially slipping. Right. And there would, be, there would still be one phenomenological coefficient. It would just the interpretation would be a little bit different. Yes. Uh, one last question from Ersag. Uh, how did you measure the theta distribution in E. coli? Um, so the, again, I will add to the, the video here. Uh, the resolution is large enough so that you can see the, uh, I will, uh, I'll, I'll zoom in a bit. Uh, we, can, we can see uh, a, a swimming E. coli as, a, as an anisotropy and we can, we can measure their disorientation. We can measure its, uh, uh, its directionality. And the same for nanorod, we have enough for the resolution. So it's the same. What we are doing tracking, we are tracking also the, the um, uh, their angle, and we, we can uh, average this over a population and, and look at the and track the the orientation for for different flow rates, background flow rates. Um, um, Ersag, you can also come and uh, talk. Uh, so you did uh, not. So, sorry, uh, sorry. Yes, thank you so much. This was a great talk. So. Uh, I was wondering whether you dyed the flagella or 
uh, or the cell body. But no, we are only look, we don't need to see the flagella. I mean, you see what you are seeing here is the is the is the cell body. We don't see the flagella. The flagell flagellum is too is too thin. Uh, but the, the orientation of the cell body is enough to um, to uh, to determine an, an orientation. But but, but you don't know whether the uh, flagella or the cell body or the pole of the cell, the other pole of the cell, is anchored to the surface, right? So in that case, you don't know that. So the flagellum, we know that uh, the flagellum is is imposing steric repulsion from the from the from the um, uh, the wall. If I if I understand the, the question correctly, so mm -hmm. the tilt can only be nose down. If I if you if you see what I mean. I see. I see your point. Yes. All right. The flagellum has a three D a three D corkscrew movement. It's not a two D movement. So mm -hmm. it's effectively pushing, lifting the back of the of the of the, bacteria, of the of the E. coli, and in fact, E. coli has many flagella, so it's a even mm -hmm. more uh, even more interaction. Okay, thank you so much. Um, do we have any more questions?